Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Careers Takeoff. We're scheduled to be speaking with Omar Garrett, one half of the LinkedIn guys. Uh, we're just waiting for him to join the show. So in the meantime, you just have myself. Um, in the While we're waiting, uh, and I'm trying to see if you can get, get on the show, just wanted to find out where people are listening or viewing this from. So if you can post in the comments, right, um, where you're watching this, it'll be great. And just to let you also know that we can continue the discussions after this uh, live stream. So I'm hosting, let me just put this up here, an after party. This will be on Discord and you can join me today, 12th of March, 4 to 4.30 p.m. at the Discord link below, right? You can ask me any questions about Cambridge Church Business School, what's happening, uh, or about the content of what we're going to cover today in terms of social media, li uh, LinkedIn, uh, how do we make career transitions, or the, any other thing related to this show or the business school. As you know, the business school, you may or may not know, actually, the business school has just appointed a new director or, and Professor Maro Gian. He will join us in September, so we're terribly excited about that. If you want to talk about that sort of thing, you can come and join me then, all right? So let's see. Okay, so we've got, we've got David from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. So that's not very far from where I grew up. I was from Singapore, so that, welcome, David. Um, if you also want to post any questions about, say, LinkedIn, social media, that would be great. Hi, Omar. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, I had to start start at 12.45 because I think some of these platforms, they don't allow you to, you know, they, they make you start on the dot. Oh, I apologize. Okay, well, um, here I am. Yeah, <laughs> so, so thanks very much, Omar. Um, Everybody, welcome to this episode of Careers Takeoff, where we learn the latest about how you can get ahead in your careers. I'm your host, Conrad Chua. I get many questions from candidates, and a lot of them ask me this question. How do I prepare for business school? And I always tell them, start building your networks. So today's guest, Omar Garrett, he knows a thing or two about career transitions. Um, Omar is... He describes himself as a teacher turned tech guy for good. And I'm, I wanted to ask him later on, what does the for good mean? Does that mean he's going to be in tech forever or he's in tech for, the, for a good purpose? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Omar, he is an, he's an entrepreneur. He's a co-founder of the LinkedIn Guys, which has helped thousands of students and alumni, including many people here at Cambridge Judge, uh, learn about modern job search techniques. And his day job, he works for global education uh, for Qualtrics. Before that, he was in product marketing to schools for Salesforce. And the list goes on on all the tech companies. He's worked at LinkedIn, where he led the schools and university team. He was in the education verticals for Adobe and Apple. And what's very interesting to me is before all of this, he started his career as a third grade teacher. Omar graduated from the University of Virginia and UC Berkeley Haas. So welcome, Omar. Thank you, Conrad. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Sorry, it was a few yeah. minutes late. I wasn't totally sure how this works. First ever live okay. stream. Oh, right. Well, you're, you're, you're a natural at this. Don't worry. All right, we'll um, see. Well, Omar, before we dive into the social media, I really have to ask you, how did you go from being a teacher to tech? Well, there were a few steps in between, but it actually was not that indirect of a path. So it's a, it's a great question. Um, uh, so the, the way I did it is through uh, building a functional expertise. And this is one of my pieces of advice for job seekers of any age, really, especially during a pandemic is, uh, you know, I was a marketing major undergrad. I had, um, after teaching, worked at a, a nonprofit in which I was able to eventually find myself and to, you know, uh, carve out a marketing role for myself. And when uh, when I went 
I did have uh, an MBA in there. But after that, I basically said, look, I'm passionate about education. I've got this experience in the industry, but my functional expertise is in marketing. You should hire me, even though it was in, in a very different context. And, you know, once you sort of get your first job in a new in a new sector, you're sort of off and running. So Adobe was that job for me. They they bought it. They said, we're trying to target the education market. And uh, this guy has a marketing background. So uh, let's go. And one thing led to another. 12 years later, um, a tech guy now. And the tech for good is not necessarily in tech for good. It's uh, it's that I, um, you know, what I care about is impacting education. Um, that was the, sem teaching was the seminal experience of my life. So making sure that uh, I'm always touching that, that sector, helping schools, helping teachers and young people is what I care most about. So um, so that's the for good part. I, I guess I could just say I'm an ed education tech guy. Yeah, I think you were in ed tech before that, that word even came about, was it? <laughs> that might be true. That might be true. I'm getting some, uh, some gray, gray hairs here on the beard. Oh, I was going <laughs> to say that uh, myself and probably millions of people uh, around the world, we've had to homeschool our kids for a period of time, you know, during this last year. So I can totally appreciate just how difficult it is to be a third grade teacher. Anyway. Um, yeah, hardest Uma, job, hardest job yeah, in the world. I, I can totally, I, I, I find it difficult just to educate one child, let alone, I don't know, class of 20, 30, 40 people. So thanks to you and all the other teachers before. Um, thanks to Omar, that, yeah. just, let's just dive in. Um, so obviously when people, the, the traditional way of applying for a job, right? You, you look on a news, you, previously you looked, open a newspaper or a magazine, or, and then now you've got job boards and you send CVs or complete an online application form. So amidst all of that, I mean, how important is social media now in this recruitment process? Well, you biased this with the intro uh, that I worked at, at LinkedIn and I am the co-founder of the LinkedIn guys. So mm -hmm. I will say there is one social media platform that is critically important, rises well above all the others. And there's a lot of data on this. And that is LinkedIn, of course, which we'll talk more about. Um, I will say, the, you know, the other social media I would approach as uh, do no harm. <laughs> uh, now, if you really want to use some of the other tools like Twitter in particular, or even blogging platforms like Medium, I think those can be useful ways to, um, to really establish a professional brand or build it, but it takes so much work, right? I mean, if, you, if you're trying to become known for something via those channels, it's just way more difficult. And it's, it's, I would liken it to, um, you know, shooting a, a you know, a, a, a a, a big blast zone instead of uh, getting very targeted, right? And LinkedIn allows you to get really targeted. So it's not that those platforms can't be help, helpful and you can't put out original content that make, you know, makes you interesting. It's just the downside risk is so much greater. So, um, you know, I would say, uh, I would say really focus your efforts on, on LinkedIn. That's where you're going to get found for, for jobs that you want to be found for. It's how you establish your professional network. It is, to your point before you need it it is also the google search result that you want to be first it's the the thing you want people to find when they google you right and the one other thing i'll say about this is we know recruiters do google right so they might find you on linkedin but they want to know what else is out there and they'll search for you. the vast majority of them will also do a google search for any candidate they're serious about and see what other kinds of particularly social media posts and um, accounts pop up so that's why I say do no harm, um, but focus on LinkedIn. Okay. I'm just going to give a shout out to some of the people who are uh, joining us today. So David's from Kuala Lumpur. Shingo's joining us from Tokyo. And Malmoon is in Munich, Germany. Uh, just a reminder, if you've got any questions for Omar or myself, put them in the comments and we'll take those. Um, Omar, I wanted to say, ask you this, which is LinkedIn sounds so important, but everybody knows that. So you're, you're competing against millions of other people. Uh, is there any hope for one individual to stand out from the rest? There is. 
Um, and that is true. There are nearly a billion members on LinkedIn, uh, fast approaching that. Um, however, and it really is the world's platform for all of this. Um, and uh, for, for the working world. And if you don't have an optimized presence, you just don't exist. Um, and so we can talk more about what that looks like. But there is hope because um, far too many people, A, don't do that. Um, but also, you know, the, the job search is, is, is regional. There's, there's lots of members. Um, but there are ways that you can get found for the exact job that you want to get found for in the place you want to get found for it. And um, sort of manipulate, if you will, uh, or game the both the human recruiter and the computer algorithm, and both of which there are concrete strategies for. Um, and I'm not sure if you if you can bring up uh, my my uh, my slide I sent you, but yeah, I can. Just hang on a second. L no problem. Let's put that there. Yep, I got right, it. There. So the first thing here is to know is to um, proactively find jobs, right? Get them pushed to you. And Conrad, you mentioned job boards around the world. Well, LinkedIn has become the default job board. They have acquired job boards. They, ha they are now scraping jobs from all over the web. There are jobs that are only posted on LinkedIn because companies pay a premium to do that. So you can reliably um, count on LinkedIn to be the place that has jobs and um, has those sort of open as they come open. And so if you, if you go to the next one, one of the strategies here to cut through the clutter, as you're saying, is to um, make sure that you set up job alerts, right? And if you just go to that jobs icon at the top of LinkedIn, you'll see um, ways that you can do all kinds of job alerts, right? You can set them for specific roles, geographies. You could even say, I only want to see certain experience levels, you know, mid-level internships, et cetera. You can get highly targeted with specific geographies. So here's a search for um, jobs in the past week uh, in London, right in that bottom right corner, 58,000. And I just want to say a real quick note on why I chose the last week here. And that's because we know that's when jobs are most open. Um, that's when they're being actively recruited for. That's when they're filling the pipeline of who are they going to give that first, first round interview to. And so really what you need to be flagging when you're doing that initial search is what are the jobs that are open, that have been become open in the past week. And ideally you're getting somebody to refer you in there because that's the best source of, of, um, of talent. Every, every hiring manager and recruiter knows that they are actively soliciting referrals. But if you can't, you are um, getting your application in in that first week and then trying to find somebody who can validate that and flag it for you. So, Setting up job alerts on LinkedIn is a really important way for you to start to start to get things pushed to you that you might be a good fit for and really cut down on that universe of the tens of millions of jobs that are on LinkedIn and and really get the ones that are most most relevant. Um, and just watch this, watch this over time. Now, the other piece that you mentioned is, well, OK, there's so many job seekers out there. How do I get found for that right opportunity? So so I just talked about finding the job. Now, how do you get found? And there's a few strategies there to stand out. You're doing great as my PowerPoint driver. Oh. All right. So, <laughs> so the first thing to understand, this is a screenshot of the LinkedIn recruiter product that um, recruiters pay $10,000 a year to, to live in. They live in this thing all day. And the first thing to realize is that these are the search results and how they're ordered. The LinkedIn searching um, searching algorithm, whether it's LinkedIn Recruiter or just plain old LinkedIn, is not a meritocracy. It is the results are ordered by, and actually recruiters can filter by, do they have company connections, right? So what does that mean? You want to be connected in directly to recruiters. You want to be connected directly to at least a handful of people at the company you might want to work for, um, because you're going to rise up in these search results when they click that filter. Do they have company connections? All right. And if you click one more time, another way you can stand out in the recruiter search results, which again, two thirds of recruiters only use recruiter to recruit 97% of them of any recruiter uses this product. Uh, the, the other way is to pass through this, this, you want to pass through all these filters you can see across the top to make sure you get found. Um, I mentioned have having company connections. There's also this filter for have they engaged with your talent brand, which is Fancy speak for are the, are you a company follower? And 
This is like the minimum action you can do on LinkedIn to show you're engaged with the firm. So if you click one more time, what you need to do to stand out here is simply follow every possible employer you might want to work for. There's no limit to how many you can follow. Just go through and click follow, follow, follow. When you start to do that, you'll see other suggestions, but that's really important so you can pass through the, um, the filter of, of are you following, uh, have you engaged with their talent brand? This is their talent brand, okay? A uh, couple final things on standing out in this sea of job seekers. Uh, there's another filter you may have noticed here that's um, actually a bit newer, which is, are you open to new opportunities? So, so this is a filter recruiters use, and they are using this now to say, don't show me all the people who are not actually raising their, their hand that they want to be found, right? Why would I waste my time on those people? Simply let me filter out the people that are um, actually open to new opportunities. And this was a long time request that recruiters had of LinkedIn and LinkedIn finally put it in its product. And so what that means for the job seeker, if you click one more time, is you've got to actually shine your bat signal that indeed you are open to new opportunities. And you do that just right on your profile. There'll be on the very top card, there'll be a little, uh, a little, um, a, a little piece of uh, a little cop block that says, you know, can do you want to show recruiters you're open to work? What's great about this is not only where you pass through that filter so recruiters can find you, um, you also can specify, OK, I've been doing uh, I've been an associate product marketing manager, but now I really want to be a product marketing manager or a product or product manager. You can actually select, I think, up to 15, no, 10 other job titles here that you would like to get found for, as well as four additional locations to where you are. So this is a way for you to get found for new, better, perhaps different geographically located opportunities. So there's some quick strategies for how you can um, get found in that, in that sea of, of job seekers you mentioned and also find the very right next job for you. Okay. In this section, I'll talk about profile, but I don't know if you wanna go there yet. Yeah, why don't we um, actually before you go go into that, you know, you mentioned about being open to um, new opportunities, and one question I do get from students and candidates is they some they're afraid, you know, that if they tick that box, the current mm -hmm. employer might find out. Is that a valid concern? So far, not valid, um, and I have yet to hear a horror story about that. So. And I, I talked to, uh, you know, I've trained tens of thousands of, of uh, job seekers at this point. So I would, and I always talk about this. So, um, so LinkedIn actually says it takes measures to make sure recruiters, anybody using the recruiter product at your current company cannot see that. So if mm. you list your current employer uh, as the, you know, as the place you indeed are working and you don't want them to see it, if you shine that bad signal to show recruiters you're open to work, um, that will only be shown to recruiters who are not employed with that company outside of, um, you know, and, and again, in the recruiter product. So this is not showing up in regular LinkedIn search or anything like that. However, you can now, if you if you happen to be um, unemployed and are actively trying to um, to find work, you can you can actually now make that viewable to everyone, to every member on LinkedIn. And it'll add a little photo frame to that says open to work. So um, so that's if you really want to you know broadcast that. Cool. Um, do you want to go on to this this next section? Sure. So you know we've we've talked about how you can find target targeted jobs. We've talked about how you can get found. Now let's talk about uh, how you you really stand out once you are rising to the top of those search results. And um, you know one thing I'll say is in the recruiter product, it's just like Google. If you're not in the first page or so, you're not. You know you kind of don't exist. So. A lot of these efforts are about, you know, gaming the algorithm so that you can rise up and then making sure the human recruiter is peaked, their interest is peaked such that they will click on your profile and then you're off and running. So there's a few key, key concepts here. The first is keywords. And this is because LinkedIn's algorithm matches on keywords. Just like if you, you know, Conrad, you started at the beginning by asking like, well, you got to sub still submit resumes and CVs. All of these things now are going through robots, whether it's LinkedIn's algorithm trying to surface the right candidate or applicant tracking systems when you send your res submit your resume to a, a company's website or on a job board. They're all being screened by robots to say, does this person have the minimum threshold match 
of keywords that we're looking for for this specific job. So on LinkedIn, this matters in these three areas in order of priority. The first is your headline. This very top, this, this um, sort of your professional brand in the world, your summary of who you are at the very top. And, and this is most important to the algorithm because it is the most character limited if you want to nerd out on that. But here is where you've got to have the right keywords that match the job you want to have next. Even if you haven't quite had that job next, you've got to find a way to get some of those keywords in there so that, um, so that you'll get found for that job. This is also most important to the human recruiter because it's the one sec it's the one thing that they scan in the search results. So headline is like a doubly important. Put a lot of thought into that. Again, it's your professional brand in the world, it's but it's also more specifically what you want to get found for next. Don't try to think 5 10 years ahead because let's be real that never happens. I, I think I wrote my business school essay about how I was going to start a nonprofit and then I became this ed tech guy, right? So um <laughs> I know all of your applications are, are very true and your, your essays are uh, really genuine and where you want to be at that moment in time. But, um, you know, this, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that this is also changeable, right? You can be, a, this is the beauty of LinkedIn above and beyond a resume. You can be a brand marketing manager one day. You can be a product marketing manager the next day, right? If you put a qualifier in front of it, like aspiring or future or, you know, next play colon, uh, the, the algorithm does not ding you for that. It, it merely says, oh, there's a keyword match, okay? The next most important section is this uh, about section. It's, 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 uh, it's basically a summary of who you are with some narrative. And the way you're gonna get keywords in there is to have a paragraph at the end that just says expertise in, or if you don't feel like you have expertise yet, you can say coursework in or specialty, you know, developing specialties in or interests in. And you just list all the keywords that are coming up most often than job descriptions that, that you're most interested in. Okay. Thirdly, job experience. And that's because if you've been a brand marketing manager, LinkedIn's algorithm is going to say, oh, you might be a good fit for a brand marketing role. Right. It's not that it's not rocket science. However, point I, I do want to point out when you think about class projects you might have done. Think about volunteer experience, which over half of recruiters say they value on par with paid full-time work experience. Those can be areas that you can get some good keyword hits as is your actual experience, even if it wasn't a full-time job. Because remember, a lot of this is aspirational. We're trying to position ourselves for the next thing. And with the right keywords, you're 40 times more likely to get views by recruiters. And so, you know, I've mentioned a little bit of this, but what makes for a discoverable profile? How do you get found by recruiters? It's all about the man or the human recruiter. And if you click one more time, uh, also, sorry, just click through the whole thing. Uh, and also about the computer algorithm, the machine. So man and machine. And a couple quick things to make sure that you stand out in these search results you're seeing on the right for the human recruiter. The first is profile photo. Most recruiters will just discard somebody who doesn't have a great profile photo at this point. It used to be people who didn't have photos at all, and that's just creepy. No one, no one has that anymore, so definitely have a photo. But it's got to be a great one. And what do I mean by that? You alone, facing forward, smiling. We're trained at an early age to respond to smiles. Um, and there's cropping tools in LinkedIn when you upload your picture, so you really want to you know, zoom in on yourself. Because remember, they're seeing this little tiny thing, and they're trying to figure out what, you know, do I want to click on that? And you, you just want to not give them any reason for pause. The last thing is dress for the appropriate culture that you want to be in, right? Review profiles of people who are in that, in that company and maybe even in that industry if you're trying to make a switch. Um, the second thing is a headline. We talked about that. That's the one area they're going to skim. Keywords, we talked about the importance of that to the algorithm. And then the last thing that I just want to say here and reiterate is connections really, really, really matter because um, they are how the search results get ordered for the recruiter, right? So again, you might have all the best keywords in the world. You might be a perfect fit on paper for a job, but if you're not connected into people that are connected to the person searching, i.e. the recruiter, usually, uh, you, you just won't rise up in these search results. So building a broad and purposeful network is really, really important. And here's a little hack I wanted to share. There's a, there's a platform we like called jobscan.co. 
Remember I mentioned everything goes through a robot now, um, right? And, you, and also you wanna sort of test out whether you are gonna be a, a match for LinkedIn's algorithm for the job you wanna be found for because recruiters are just searching for the basics, right? They're like, I need to fill a job uh, with this title and probably this location. They, and then they say, algorithm, show me those people, right? Show me the people that are easiest for me to reach, I have connections to, et cetera. And so this is a cool little hack for job seekers where you can paste in your resume on one side or your LinkedIn profile, and then the job description that you wanna be found for or that you really wanna be interviewing for on the right, and it'll tell you the percentage match, what keywords are you missing, where do you really stand out? And that's crucial because, you know, again, all of these, uh, any, a resume or the LinkedIn algorithm, you've gotta get through this, uh, this, ro this robot that's scanning constantly for keywords and trying to figure out is this somebody I should even serve up to the recruiter or the hiring manager for an interview? So there's, there's a few gates that you have to pass through. Hmm. And so using and Conrad, once like... to answer your question, once yeah. you know this stuff, you are way ahead of the uh, hundreds of millions of job seekers out there. That That's exactly what I was going to ask. So this is almost like giving a, passing through a test robot. Is that right? Like the test machine. Yeah, exactly. This is like giving that a trial run to make sure that you're going to you're going to be able to pass through that when it comes game time. OK, I think you've got a next section on posting. Just a reminder to everybody, if you've got questions, please put them in the comment section. And I see yeah, got, I mean, you, you were asking yeah. about social media. I don't necessarily have to talk about this, but real quick, there's a lot of confusion about what is, you know, what kind of activity should I take on LinkedIn? Um, because mm. it's not like other social media, right? It's it's a professional platform, and uh, what's most important are the strategies I already talked about. But there are a few things that you know are and are not important. So if you just go to the next slide, let me just um, and and I should clarify this. This I'm saying this doesn't matter because I'm really focused on what does it take to put your best foot forward as a job seeker. Now you might find some of this stuff interesting from another perspective, you know, learning, etc. But Making status updates, kind of like a tweet, doesn't matter. LinkedIn says that uh, everything you, every status update you post on LinkedIn will drive one more view to your company's job portal. Um, if you really care about that, then okay, make a status update. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's a good thing to do for just networking purposes, right? You build a new connection, you have a great coffee chat with somebody, you wanna give them a shout out on LinkedIn, make that public. You know, pe flattery goes a long way and you wanna set up an expectation of reciprocity that they're gonna help you later, right? Don't be transactional when you network. Um, endorsements don't matter um, because you can be endorsed by your mom for your Excel skills. It's just this weak, weak signal that recruiters don't pay attention to. A lot of questions I always get about LinkedIn premium also doesn't really matter. And that's because it doesn't rise you up in the search results. It doesn't get you found. It doesn't allow you to really do anything that is um, going to help you stand out in the job search or with recruiters. It does give you in mails and a few other things. If you hit a paywall from doing a lot of heavy um, people searching as you're building your network, you can always trial it for free for 30 days. Now, what does matter? I would argue is posting articles. So not status updates, but actually think of this more like blog posts. And right there on the homepage, if you see an option to write an article, put some real thought into this, but especially if you wanna pivot into a new kind of job or a new industry, this can be a really great way to say, or, or if you're wrapping up your, your, your first, the first part of your career and you're about to go to business school or something, right? What have you learned? Uh, did you go to an event? Did you read an, a, an article that really stimulated your interest? And this is a great way to show you have an original thought on, you know, really think about it as positioning yourself for what you want to do next. And what's great about this is there's built in distribution, right? It's going to go out to the LinkedIn platform and your network. It's a good opportunity for you to show, not just tell, which you can also do on your profile, add doc, add think projects that you actually worked on things that you're really proud of, not generic stuff about the places you've worked, but actually show your work product. Don't go overboard with that, but you know, a couple things per job you've had. And then the other great thing about the, the blog posts is that they're pinned to your profile. So anybody can see them and you know, you'll find just people view them over time. The third thing that does matter, if endorsements don't matter, 
recommendations do matter. And so my recommendation, pun intended, is to get one per job that you've had. Doesn't matter who it's from, but it's just a nice source of validation. Doesn't have to be long. It's just, hey, I know this person, they are who they say they are. And then remember, do not neglect that volunteer experience section either because you know, over half of recruiters say that's, that's the same as paid full-time work and often where you can get a lot of those keywords, uh, keywords in. Hmm. I, at this point, I just wanted to make sure we're clear. So the endorsements on LinkedIn, that's the part where you say, okay, Omar is great at education, technology, technology, just tick, 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 that kind of thing. But yeah, a recommendation is, is, is where yes. someone types out a description. Is that right? Yes, 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 exactly. So recommendations are attached to specific jobs you had. You can actually request that people you worked with submit a recommendation for you. Um, and again, those don't have to be long. They don't have to be from like somebody with a fancy title or people who have um, managed you necessarily. Um, endorsements, I, I will differentiate that from skills because you, if you're really paying attention, you saw earlier I said skills are important to get found by the algorithm. You should go in and say, I have these skills, mm. right? because that's part of the indexing of the algorithm. Um, and, however, it doesn't, you know, it, it's not, that's the, all you gotta do. If people endorse you for those skills, what I'm saying is that that doesn't matter. It's not something recruiters can search on, for example. They can search on if you have those skills in the first place, i.e. have you said you have them. One last thing on this point that is actually valuable and is a very new feature on LinkedIn is um, you might have noticed there's now skill quizzes you can actually take assessments to, to validate whether you have a specific skill and they tend to be more technical skills. But if, if that's you, I recommend you do that um, on LinkedIn. They're just 15 multiple choice questions. And if you, you know, if you, if you actually know a programming language, for example, uh, why not get that badge on your profile? Hmm. Cool. And I think this is your, your link to the LinkedIn guys. Yeah. So, you know, if, if any of this piqued your interest or was useful, um, check out our website, linkedinguys.com. You can get a free profile checklist there. You can follow us at two LinkedIn guys on um, Twitter. And I might as well start to put a plug in for this. Um, uh, in about a year, we'll have a, a book a book coming out called The New Job Search, which we're really excited about. Um, and so stay tuned for that. If you follow to it, follow us on Twitter or download the free profile checklist, You'll uh, you'll get it. You'll get notified when that book book comes out. Any sure. questions so, or anything? Yeah, I actually Omar, I had one question, which is, how do people? What's is there a strategy for people to start? Like you know, if they're interested in a company or an industry, do they just try to connect with people in that company? Just search connect. Uh, do they go through, let's say, a first first connection to get to someone the second? Is that is that easier? Or should they just try to send an email? So the so the lowest hanging fruit is always a connection request, and you want to personalize those, right? You want to say, "Why am I trying to uh, connect with you?" And you want to do it in a very simple way. Just say, um, "Why are you trying to connect with them?" Lead with your connective tissue. So I always recommend you connect with fellow alumni first, right? Mm -hmm. Of any school you ever went to, which you can find on LinkedIn pretty easily. And then think about, you know, view their profile, see what kind of shared connections you might have, see if they have shared interests, passions, backgrounds, even locations that you might have in common. You're looking for any connective tissue and then you're flattering them. Your career path was so amazing, but that's what you want to put in your connection request and personalize it. In fact, Conrad, after uh, I did the, a training with the, your business students uh, a week or so ago, I got one in mail from somebody that said, I'm so sorry I sent a connection, pers a connection request without personalizing it. Here's all the reasons <laughs> I want to connect with you. And she sent me like three paragraphs and it was amazing. Uh, and I was like, yes, uh, I'm going to connect with you. <laughs> now, that was a little bit much. But if you stick to why this is the right person, what your shared affiliation or affiliations are, and then a call to action is, and then flattery, of course, and then mm -hmm. a call to action is really good. Do you have 15 minutes next week, which is always better than this week for a quick chat? That is because you're trying to warm them up as a as a warm lead and ultimately a referral. But don't don't waste that opportunity of connecting with them to not make an ask. Right. Mm. You can make an ask. They might just accept your request and not respond to that or they might they might not even accept it. But if they don't, you know, there's a lot of other strategies you can try if you're if you're sure they're the right person. Um, you can connect in with more people who are connected to them. 
Uh, but I really like using a, the the school as a way to get into to people because you have that that sort of lowest hanging shared affiliation of the school mm. you care about. Last thing I'll say is if you really need to get to somebody and nothing has worked, connection requests, um, shared connections, making an introduction, personalizing your shared your 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 connection requests, maybe sending in mails. Although I think that's basically the same as sending a connection request, which is one of the reasons why I don't value uh, premium. Um, the last the nuclear option is you can use a, a site called Hunt, Hunter.io Hunter.io which will uh, allow you to find the work email address of anybody. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's a way to reach them at their work email address. Okay, cool. We have like seven minutes. So if anyone wants to post any questions, put them there uh, in your comment section. But while, 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 we, while we have you, Omar, I, was, I mentioned before the show, uh, we're going to do something a little bit fun, right? Okay. Which is you're going to have a look at my LinkedIn profile and give some yeah. quick comments on it. Oh, sorry, I put put you on it. Sorry. Oh yeah, uh, is that an accident or not? Oh yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to. I, I I wanted to actually highlight some of the things that that you've done. I mean, I, I think you you've done a really great job here. If I if I might say so, um, I actually don't recognize this person. But never mind. <laughs> But this is true. This Keep actually, your profile pictures up, updated. That one is from over <laughs> 10 years ago. Okay. But I love how you did this featured section. So um, is this what you, I mean, as and when you, 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 you get things uh, published and stuff, do you put that there on, on, on the featured? Yeah, what's great about this is it's not just things that are out there in the World Wide Web that you have published. It's also that rich media I was talking about that you can attach to any section of your profile. LinkedIn has now, so you'll, you know, you'll see some of this is just it's stuff that I did. It's um, yes, it's videos, but you can also, you could also upload a PDF, a project that you did, a PowerPoint, something that is obviously okay to share publicly, um, a, a class project, a, some, a paper you wrote, right? And then when you attach it to a section of your profile, you know, maybe it's attached to the education section or to a specific job that you did it for. You also can then designate certain content as featured, so it shows up right at the top there. Is this um, is this what you mean by putting it putting content here? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Uh, linking it yep. to a job because I I actually yep. don't see that that often, but it looks so good because it's so much it gives you so much more information than say a standard CV. Exactly. And that is the real value of LinkedIn. It's the, it's, it's a, um, it's a, I like to call it a resume plus or a CV plus because it has all of these visual elements. It has show, not just tell, right? You, you know, this is so valuable for job, job, um, hirers because they can actually see what, what has this person done in their own words, right? I've got, I've got PDFs there. I've got things that I worked on now. It's a little bit easier for me having been in marketing functions because that was a lot of what I did, pumped out marketing content. However, no matter what your role is, you should always think about how you can show, not just tell who you are. And this is the value of, of, of LinkedIn. It's, it's, it's your resume plus some narrative. It's your resume plus the show, not tell. It's your, your resume plus validation with, with uh, recommendations, right? So, I mean, I, I, I have hired for lots and lots of roles, and I have never once asked for a resume. I'll just say that. Oh, wow. Okay, to be fair to you, I'm going to show you, oh, my profile, I think. Yeah, here we go. Your old your old photo. Yeah, and oh, you can t you can it's almost like carbon dating. You can figure out how long ago this this picture was taken by the amount of hair I've got. It's always so, the hair, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so if, if this was like someone's profile, I guess the first thing is to get that picture updated, smile, you know, this was taken at a, I think I, I took this, I had this taken when I was in Singapore. And at the time, you know, the, the photographer just said, be serious. So your tip, <laughs> I think, is to say, look at, think about where you, where, which sector you want to go into. And if it's serious, you know, looking at profiles, if it's serious, be serious. If it's a bit, you know, different, you know, be more creative, be, be more creative. Oh, is that right? I, I think actually there's never a reason not to smile. Okay. Uh, I, I, that, I think it's uh, because that's human conditioning, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, you're trying to get a profile click when you see those results. 
you should always be smiling. The the way you might want to cater your your photo is just with what you're literally what you're wearing um, to signal I'm part of that tribe. I'm part of the the tribe of career mm -hmm. services professionals. I am the part of the tribe of you know, um, podcasters, whatever, whatever your professional brand is that you that you want to put out there in the world. So the other thing is, it's just a little, you know, I, you can always err on the side of format more formal, which mm. is fine, right? You don't want to look less formal. I'm not saying if you want to be in tech, take your picture in a hoodie. Um, but your background makes it look like it was a really professional photo, which is which is fine. Um, mm. But it's a little like glamour shot, you know, glamour shoddy. So yeah. maybe there's a you know, it looks like you looks like you're modeling. Um, so, so uh, <laughs> you can actually do amazing things with these phones nowadays on on yeah. portrait mode and get pretty close to that. The other thing yeah. here, Conrad, is you know that hor horizontal space here. Um, yeah. This photo, this horizontal photo, I call this the Facebookization of LinkedIn. I don't know why they've added this, but it's just another branding element. So. Think about what you want to visually communicate here too. And most importantly, how just do something different from the standard generic thing they give you. you this is just a space you can use. And there's a mm. site I like, pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S.com that has royalty free photos. Um, but you know, if you've taken a great horizontal one or you can crop these too, um, maybe you want the skyline of the city you really want to be in. Maybe mm. you want the Cambridge Judge School because you really want to be there. Um, I don't know. And Conrad, I assume there's a personal significance to this, but, um, you know, think about what you're, it's a beautiful photo, um, you know, and it's doing something different than what's, what's the, than the generic that's there. Yeah. And, and notice Cambridge, he has not shot, he has not shown his bat signal that he's open to new opportunities. So he's, he's here, uh, he's with you right yeah, there is yeah. where you would turn that signal on. This open to part. Oop, that's right. Yeah. Uh, well, wow. Yeah, they've put that right there. That's a fairly new change. What LinkedIn does is it rolls out these new features to a select group of people first who are power users. And then over time, it rolls them out to everyone. So you're probably in the 5% of people that just got that new feature I just saw. Wow. But I was referring more wow. to that bottom right box, show recruiters oh. you're open to work. Okay. Yeah, but it looks like you can do that, do that now very easily right at the top, top left there too. That's something to, to know that I'm a power user. I didn't know that. You are a power um, user. After, after your talk to our students last week, I actually did start putting stuff on Featured. Good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, talk us about this, this section here about view profile, article views. I mean, is that, is that important at all? So what's interesting is it's probably not that important, but it is the most popular part of LinkedIn. It is the most viral part of the of the of the platform because it plays to our vanity and our voyeurism, two very strong human instincts. So people love who's viewed my profile so much so that they put it right there in the dashboard on your profile. And for for a job seeker, I will say there's a couple ways you can use this that are actually minimally useful. If you click on who's if you first of all, somebody who's viewed your profile can be a signal. Right. So if you've applied at a job and a recruiter at that company has viewed your profile, that's a signal, uh, a hiring manager, perhaps even. Or if you've applied for a job and you don't even know who is the hiring manager, if somebody who looks like they're in that function that you applied for viewed your profile, that that's a good sign that you're process you're, you're moving through at least. Now, if they viewed your profile five days ago and you haven't heard anything, that's not a good sign. Right. <laughs> So, uh, so that can be sort of useful as a clue. Um, second thing I'll say is um, if you really want to connect with somebody, because this is such a viral uh, feature, when you connect with somebody or even when you view their profile, they'll often view your profile back, right? Mm -hmm. And when that happens, that's kind of all you need to say, oh, hey, I noticed we viewed each other's profile. Would you be willing to have a 15 minute chat about your amazing career path and start to build that, that connection? So. Uh, it, 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 it can be useful, um, but it's more just clickbait, uh, mm, <laughs> you know, dopamine, yeah. do, dopamine hit. Okay. I, I admit, I have to confess, I, I look at that number and it gives me that little dope, that little, uh, right. sense of satisfaction every time I see it, it going up, right. but I'll bear that in mind. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. 
So Omar, thanks very much for giving us your time. How do people, can you remind people how, how can people uh, get in touch with the LinkedIn guys or yourself? Yeah, just go to linkedinguys.com, sign up for our email list. Um, get, you'll get a free profile checklist that goes into much more detail than I did today on what you need to do. Um, and then we've also got an online course you can take, um, which has a really cool new feature where we're grading your profile on uh, 10 different elements. Um, and then the last thing is, yeah, just follow us on Twitter at two LinkedIn guys. Okay. I wish everyone the best of luck. The economy the will URL come back. The URL is right but... there. Yep. Thank you. Yep. That's the um, URL. So thank you very, very much for joining us. I'll be back in two weeks when we interview one of our alums, Kartik Krishnan. He will be talking about startups, what you should be doing if you're heading a startup in terms of getting that growth engine going. So join us then. Thank you very much.